C2 servers are essentially the brain of a cyber attack. They are where a threat actor can issue commands to the malware deployed in a target network and where those pieces of malware are actually sending the results of the commands back to the threat actor. So this is how the uh, entire attack is orchestrated and how the threat actor controls what they actually want to do within a target network. There's a bunch of malicious attacks going out there out on the web, right? Um, but the best and easiest way to communicate with your compromised host that you've launched malware on is through a C2 framework, a command control framework, right? And so some of the most popular ones here are like Empire, Covenant, um, uh, Cobalt Strike and whatnot. Um, those are really popular because there's a lot of documentation on there. Uh, some of these are free and open source, like, like Brewer, Tell, and Sliver. Um, so because there's a lot of documentation and then modules for each of these uh, um, frameworks, it makes it really, really nice and easy for these threat actors to uh, leverage them. Everybody should care about detecting command and control on their networks. Um, obviously, command and control is part of the cyber kill chain, and uh, furthermore, it's one of the earlier stages within the cyber kill chain. Uh, so detecting activities at this stage will likely uh, help prevent any of the subsequent downstream malicious activities that a threat actor wants to perform in your network. I'm a threat actor, right? and I want to gain access to your network. And so there is the typical way where I can scan your environment, your external uh, interfaces, look for a way in, try to do some sort of remote code execution to actually uh, penetrate my way in. Uh, but at some point, um, you'd also look at things like phishing attacks, right? So um, maybe uh, you could receive a, a malicious document, a maldoc, right? You download the Word Office document, you execute it. Uh, inside there might be a beacon. And so once you execute that malicious code, that box now becomes the landing zone. The landing zone then phones home to the malicious command control server um, saying, yep, I've made it. I'm here, right? What do you want me to do next? Um, so in, in that aspect, you can see like command control servers like the headquarters, um, the landing zone is where the malicious document was executed, and now they're communicating back and forth. Um, and then from there, the threat actor now has a foothold inside the network, and then can do things like exfiltrate data off that computer or move laterally.